here we go. The Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral Podcast. Thrilled you're here. Of course, right on cue, (laughs) my cat Leah walks into the studio. So yeah, stoked you're here. 18 million podcasts to listen to. You have chosen this one. Uh, Hopefully not through an algorithm. You made your own choice to be here listening. And yeah, I I just, a lot going on mentally for me that I've been thinking about. I've been trying to figure out how to connect the dots and somehow make this all make sense. Before I get into it, I had a wonderful conversation with Marlies Joubert that I'm still thinking about. It went live about oh a week ago, so that's up on all podcast sites. I do like to sort of intersperse or sprinkle in some some episodes where it's just me uh, adding some commentary um, on the world, so that's sort of what today's episode is. I had a wonderful conversation with news reporter Christy Lee. I'm in the midst of editing that. Should go live next week. And then some other guests lined up as well, some writers. So I'm excited for the show. Uh, As you know, part of the reason why there was a delay with some episodes or there was sort of a break or sabbatical in regards to the podcast, I just put out a new record. I'm incredibly thrilled about this new album. It's called Dystopian Days. I think it is the quintessential COVID record. I think lyrically melodically, music-wise, I think this record sums up a lot of the emotion that I was experiencing in 2020. This sort of will begin my examination into the destruction that is being created by our culture, by social media and the news media, and what has been uprooted. I have just released a record. It's 30 Minutes. And I truly believe, now of course there are exceptions, but we live in a world now where it is too much to ask of the majority of people to sit down with no distractions, put on some headphones, and submerge themselves into the world of my album. This is not an indictment on people's intellect, intelligence. This is... Simply an indictment on technology completely changing people's abilities, ability to sit still, listen, consume, and think for themselves. I want to begin by talking about the news media. So technology is impacting the news media in such a, just to such a degree where truth no longer matters. Finding nuance and context no longer matters. And I'm just going to bring up a couple examples here. Colin Powell just passed away about four or five days ago. He's 84 years old. He had multiple myeloma, which is one of the most deadly um, types of cancer with an incredibly high fatality rate. So the media... I don't know who who has decided they are saying that he has died from COVID complications. Despite having the vaccine, they are despite having multiple myeloma and being 84 years old, the media is classifying it as um, death from COVID complications. And then you have, of course, the anti-vaxxers who are who are saying, see. He had the vaccine, and he still died from COVID complications. And then you are having the pro-vaccinated people that are saying, well, he should have had the booster, or if there was another booster that was available, maybe that would have held off um, him dying from quote-unquote COVID complications. And it, it just certainly raises a brow for me, because... If somebody who had who was 84 years old, who had multiple myeloma, who was dealing with multiple myeloma, I don't know if he was still going through chemotherapy, but if people who are classifying death, if they are saying that that's an instance of COVID, well, no wonder the numbers are so high. It's it, Here's an example where this is a man who's 84 years old. The media should be celebrating and honoring this man. And instead, you have the vaxxers, the anti-vaxxers, and the media making this about COVID. 
COVID is more, this is about attention. This is about what is the media hierarchically placing higher than anything else. So honor doesn't matter. Truth doesn't matter. Context doesn't matter. Um, Instead, we have Trump who's lambasting uh, Colin Powell on social media. And then we have the media talking about COVID complications instead of honoring an 84-year-old man who was dealing with multiple myeloma. That's not the story. You have Alec Baldwin who tragically, accidentally, and I don't even know the proper verbiage here, but I guess he had a a, a fake gun or a prop gun that we don't even know if, if, if there were live bullets still in it. Uh, who knows? Clearly there's something tragic and terrible that goes on, that, that went on last week uh, on his movie set. So instead of that being a story, people on Twitter are going through old tweets that he sent years ago about gun violence. And, and of course, they're being snarky. And so Fox News writes some sort of story where the story isn't about the tragedy and how awful he probably feels. The story is the snarky Twitter comments. And instead of keeping it on Twitter... Fox News is bringing it onto their quote-unquote news page by talking about it. So that's the story. Let's kick a man who's already down and make him feel worse. It's so interesting to me, releasing this record... I know that we live in a single world right now when it comes to music, but I want people to experience a record. Listening to Parachutes, Grace, OK Computer, Sea Change, those are some of the most enriching, enlightening experiences for me when I put on some headphones and submerge myself into a full record. We are all, as artists, as human beings, we are allowing technology to rule our lives. And I think it's creating more destruction. I think it's part of the issue with this world that we live in where people aren't listening. Art isn't a meme. Creativity isn't Instagram. NFTs. I know the world wants you to think that a meme is creative that the filters on Instagram are creative. Creating more thought, writing a book, producing a record, trying to go deep into your own personal exploration of creativity, that is the creative process. That is craft. Instagram is creating a world where we are being tricked into thinking, filters, reels, being quick, editing fast, that's creative, that's cool, that should be highly regarded, and we are all falling for it. Instagram, social media, Facebook, Twitter, they are all dehumanizing us. We are being restricted to 140 characters or less, 60 second videos or less knowing that people are just scrolling through their feed every single day that is impacting the way creators at netflix amazon hulu how they create content because they know that people's attention spans are downright despicable and terrible so technology has won If you bring your phone with you everywhere you go, you are officially a robot. This, it's it's weird. It's almost like Blade Runner was so far down the line of science fiction that we think, oh, if we're not looking like children of men or science fiction or, or, or Blade Runner, then we are not a science fiction film. We are living a science fiction film. We are in dystopian days. Truth doesn't matter. 
Health doesn't matter. The vaccine is more important than getting into better health. Memes are more important than language. A song is more important than an album. It's like we have all been turned into the cliff note version of a full human experience. And frankly, I I am pretty distraught and tired of it. Facebook and Instagram have also created rise of the narcissist and the self-indulgent psychopath or or sociopath. Here my cats again. Let me and let me try to explain. I was listening to a podcast where this artist was saying, you know, as long as narcissistic behavior, if you're not hurting somebody else, then it's okay. <laughs> and I thought to myself, only an ins- only a narcissist could say that to themselves to allow narcissistic behavior to go on. What what Instagram is doing, it's making people think only about themselves. It's turning people into narcissists who only think of themselves. It's creating a world where beauty and good-looking people should be valued more than other types of people. It's creating a world where if you're quick and fast with your edits, then you should be valued more than other people. It's creating a world where more followers, more likes is better than somebody who has less followers and less likes. It's complete. And anybody who can't see that is so addicted to the dopamine that they get on their on the platform that they can't be honest and objective about the destruction of social media of our society promulgated from social media. And it's really this this is the thing. So news media doesn't care about truth. And then social media has eroded our value system. Like, what do you value? What is most valuable in your world right now? Because for the vast majority of people, and, and the reason why vaccine mandates are happening, why companies can get away with doing that type of thing, is because you have millions of people right now who value social media and Instagram and their likes and their followers more than anything else. That's all that matters to them. They don't even care about what's going on uh, outside in the world. And then you also have millions of people right now who are so addicted to Squid Games and Netflix and Hulu, they don't fucking care about anything else. That's all that matters to them. This is about values. This is a assault on human beings. Truth doesn't exist. And what we value as a society, you know, be it health, human-to-human contact, conversations, listening, context, nuance, depth, those don't matter anymore. This is the most pernicious assault on human beings, I think, since World War II, since Vietnam. I mean, this we are living through a psychological war right now. It, it what's so scary, it's so pernicious and so subtle and so psychological that I don't know if we can get out of it. Our our priorities are so um out of whack and, and what's valuable. I have a close friend who is potentially going in for a very serious surgery to battle a serious health condition. We are losing any appreciation towards what's really important, the the beauty of the human being. I mean, to be able to move my hands, to be able to speak, to be able to listen and talk, none of that matters. It's all over. And it's because our value system is being completely uprooted by a smartphone. And if, if, again, I said this earlier, if you carry your smartphone with you everywhere you go, if you can't go anywhere without looking at Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, 
You are already a robot. You have turned into a robot. This is unlike any sort of science fiction film we've seen. The world wants you to think that unless it looks like Blade Runner or Children of Men, this is all normal. No, this is far from normal. We are all being turned into myopic, one-dimensional robots. And it's because the news media is no longer doing their job. They are pulling strings, getting people to feel and think a particular way. And then they're also relying on Twitter to, to sort of get your attention. And then, you know, this is my last point. You know, there was a big story about the whistleblower that was on 60 Minutes who used to work at Facebook and is unleashing this, this amazing, shocking story about Facebook and how they shouldn't be trusted. First of all, it's like newsflash, obviously. Second of all, I don't fault Facebook for wanting to make billions of dollars. They, they should try to make billions of dollars, especially living in a capitalistic society. They have shareholders. They have plenty of expenses. Make money. This is not about criticizing them as a company trying to make billions of dollars. What this is a criticism of, what are they doing to try to make billions of dollars? What are they doing to the algorithms? What are they doing? How are they pulling the strings? They know, these systems know that people are attracted to sexuality, violence, um, conflict, their platform is giving rise, giving voice to trolls, to snarky comments, to it's also bringing rise to people's ego. If you have 10, 15,000 followers, that is more important than anything else. And I, and I see it. I, I, I see this. I see people's ego explode and change. I see people becoming more selfish and narcissistic the more followers they get. And, and that becomes more valuable than anything else. I see people becoming more snarky, egocentric, egomaniacal the more followers they get. It's different if, you know, Reese Witherspoon's talent as an actor or Oprah Winfrey's talent as a journalist slash interviewer, all of that led to her getting a lot of followers. But if your sort of snarky attitude is creating more followers, or if something you're doing on Instagram is bringing you more attention, I see people's egos just go through the roof and their sense of objectivity, empathy, ability to listen, thinking about anything but themselves, all of that is, is torn apart. And that's what Facebook and Instagram are doing. They're changing people's values. They're changing what's important. And I see a strange assault going on with our society. And I am very concerned. And I... As I mentioned them earlier, a huge, I, I, I support any of these authors, journalists, Ezra Klein, Sam Harris, Barry Weiss, John McWhorter, anybody trying to add intellect and nuance and context and, and highbrow discussion, we need to elevate these people because we are, we are being turned into to fragments. Our brains are being squished. Our attention spans are no longer. If, if you can't sit through an album for 30 minutes without any distractions, technology is one. You have been turned into a robot. <laughs> Sorry to say, but it's true. If you can't go anywhere without a phone, you've been turned into a, a robot. It may not look like Minority Report. It might not look like Blade Runner, but we are living through a science fiction film. 
I am going to end the show today with a new song from my record. It's called Be the Flame. And again, this this album, Dystopian Days, to me, represents what has gone on the last 18 months. And I get really frustrated when people say, oh, it's the quote-unquote new normal. The mental destruction that, have, that, that Fauci and the media have created, it's irreparable. And, and I, I really, I feel anger sometimes when I think about what Fauci has done to the world. Kids are being forced to wear masks, being forced to get vaccines. And when somebody sneezes or coughs, the level of anxiety that people feel is, is unreasonable. It, it, it doesn't add up. It's, it, it doesn't align with the level of anxiety that one should feel. We should not feel this level of anxiety around other human beings. So I'm going to end the show today with Be the Flame. It's from my new album, Dystopian Days. You know where to find me on social media, at the Spiritual Spiral Podcast, or Eddie Cohn. Again, this show is about, I, I know the irony here as I'm uh, sharing my social media platforms. This is about reshaping what, what we value. This show is about reminding people the value of of being able to walk, move our hands, using other senses besides our eyes. Because technology is reshaping the value system and what's important. And we need to stop it. Be the flame. Enjoy the song. You know where to find me on social media. As always, thank you to you for listening, supporting, and being a part of the Downward Facing Spiritual Spiral Podcast. Miss the world we had Miss the beauty before Just maybe we walked the earth with dinosaurs Like a flame at the shore Love's weighted down Mothers and sisters should rule and crown Used to be the flame Used to be the flame We used to be the flame Used to be the flame Used to be the flame China stole all the lies and trust And beat up minds in the cycle
Oh, 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 oh,